But I'm live. Bloody hell. What a mess. What is going on? Right, guys are joining in now. So, Manuel. Oh, Manuel, you're here. Now, let, let me request you. Actually, I don't know how you... How, how do I do that? Oh. Okay, I beg you, bracket. Re-request. Go live. Wait for Manuel. There we go. There we go. I can see you. <laughs> Does that work now? Yes, I can see you and I can hear you. That's Do you know what? I was so scared that, that, that the same thing as last time was going to happen. Oh, I was like, oh my God, we're having some serious first world problems here. I know. I bet Sam is like over the moon that whole thing God is working. <laughs> right. Working. Hello. What's good? Are you all right, mate? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for reaching out. Thanks for giving me... Uh, opportunity to come here and rep <laughs> yes well that's, that's how are you what is it we just want people to come here and slide off their unions essentially <laughs> yeah yeah i saw last week's um interview that that, that was pretty interesting <laughs> so um do you want to give yourself do you want to do a quick introduction to yourself sure so um my name is manuel i recently graduated from westminster's last no i mean just june coming up and um, I'm currently doing my part two right now. No, no, just finished my part two. I'm working as a, I'm working as a part two at Granite Architects, where I've been for like nearly four years now. And we specialize in private resi. And then on the side, I'm kind of like, you know, doing myself, doing a bit of little hustle, side projects, and eventually kind of going in a direction slash path of um, where we all want to be one day. What's well, um, architects? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the funny thing about architecture, or at least the tools that we were given while studying, it, 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 it opens the door to many different things as well. So aside from art, uh, architecture, I kind of have a passion for branding and, and just like design in relation to identities and logos and just stuff like that, which cool. is quite, quite interesting. Yeah, it's cool to be there. Yeah. That's really, so um, how's this lockdown been? Oh, it's mixed emotions. Have you, have, you, have, you, have you been working throughout it? Or? Yeah, yeah. So, funnily, um, I got affected by it towards the end of my studies. Um, so, yeah, I think it started like around some, sometime in May or something like that. And I kind of, I guess what you guys are going through. Are you, are you studying at the moment right now? I am, yeah. Yeah, so probably the whole working. Work, yeah. <laughs> Working from home, online tutorials and stuff like that was a bit, was a bit of a hmm, complicated one. But you know, you pull through, and 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 yeah, now I went back to full time once I finished my studies, and and yeah, I'm I'm working from the office some days, like they allow it as long as you can get there safely, following precaution yeah. and, and and so on. And then some other days I just work from home, so I'm quite set up. I have the setup at home as well. Yeah, fair play. Yeah. Like most people right now, got this weird setup at home, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. So, let's get into it, some of the it, questions. It so, works for some, and it doesn't for some others. Pardon? It works for some, and it's a bit more tougher for others. Yeah, it was awful for me right now, <laughs> but yeah, so let's get into some of the questions. Cool. So, you're now you've done your part two, you know, yeah. working. And um, did you do your undergrad at um, Westminster? No, so, so I actually did my undergrad at Portsmouth okay. and I graduated 2015 and I took three years out before going to do my master's. Yeah. So the reason I took three years out is because um, I decided to work almost like a year um, at three different firms to kind of like find myself in terms of um, architectural styles and, and what, I, what it is that I want to be working for. So I started off in a more commercial based uh, practice um, in central London. And, uh, you know, it was fun, got my experience from there. And then I went to um, a large kind of resi based practice where it was like mixed developments and like 500 plus units and stuff. That was fun as well. So I got my experience there, but then I kind of settled where I am now, which is mostly uh, private residential projects. And the reason for this is because I quite like Firstly, working on something that you can actually be seen built yeah. <laughs> within the, within a decent time frame, um, 
and yeah, it's quite personal. Like, like you connect with it at a good scale and it's comfortable and it, it, it's like you see an end to it at some point. Yeah. Yeah. So, so when you started your, um, so once you've done your three years out and then you decide, right, I'm going to go back and do your masters. Yeah. What other places were you looking at? Or what made you choose Westminster? So uh, I think my top three options were actually uh, Saint, uh, Central St. Martins, yeah, uh, Westminster, and uh, UCL. Yeah. Uh, Central St. Martins, in terms of entry requirements, were asking for like archive stuff, like 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 in terms of portfolio to show them like stuff from way back then. And I just didn't find the time to actually put a portfolio together to show it to them. And then UCL, um, the more I kind of like went into it, stuff like that, I, I noticed it, it's a bit too conceptual for me. So I, I can tell you, mate, it's, it's out of, it's, it's yeah, beyond. Yeah. So, I mean, later on, once we get into the interview, I, I guess I'll be able to tell you the difference between coming from a university like Portsmouth, which is outside of London, um, to then what my experience in the, in the London-based university was. Yeah. So what were the entry requirements in for Westminster? So uh, that's like the only thing I researched in, <laughs> before this interview, because I was like, you know, what? I'm just going to answer all, everything off the bat. But uh, in terms of the requirements, I believe it was a 2-2 a, um, a to get in um, okay. if you studied architecture. And if you didn't study architecture, I think that's for a 2-1 minimum. So um, two, 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 yeah, so once you, once you do that, you then, if you get nominated, you then go in for an interview. And I guess that interview is another phase that you have to go through. Um, and kind of like tick all the boxes for them for them to kind of send you that offer i guess yeah so yeah yeah that was qu quite a nice experience as well like like it's, it's a bit nerve-wracking when you're there but um it's pretty chilled and laid back and and it's just yeah just a good, good experience overall was there anything that was more attractive about westminster compared to the other unis you applied to um so i went into it a bit anal in the sense that um Westminster, in terms of reputation and name, was quite decent to look on paper. Yeah. But also, I was kind of um, keen on preserving some sort of like lifestyle slash um, study study life as well, like student. Because at Portsmouth, I don't know if you're aware of Portsmouth. Um, if you don't, if you're not from there, you're not a local or something like that. It's pretty much just a student town, and yeah, and you just do that kind of stuff. But now that I'm going to do my master's and you're kind of a bit more mature in life and stuff like that, you'd like to balance it out with some sort of like your, your day to day lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So being in London provided that balance um, in terms of like you're not only just seeing uni friends, you're also seeing, I guess, the friends that you've established in, in, in London and also kind of like I worked while doing my master's. So yeah. that was kind of beneficial for me as well because um, ah. I make a living as well, aside from, from just getting a lot so, of so would you say it was difficult to balance? Were you working at an architectural firm whilst um, doing your master's or was it? Yeah, so I was working um, at the beginning, I was actually working three days a week and going, oh. yeah. So then when things got a bit tougher, I then dropped it down to two days a week. But my mentality behind this was um, obviously being in practice before and having that sort of um, kind of workflow was treating every day at uni like if it was an office day. So yeah. like, like mentally be prepared to have like your 96 and be productive within those hours. Um, so that was constantly my, 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 my workflow. So anything on top of that was almost like a bonus because you kind of get carried away, obviously, and, and so on. Social life does drop. <laughs> yeah. But like, I mean, that's expected. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was an advantage to kind of go into it with that mentality. Yeah, do you know what? I kind of wish I had that mentality when I started masters, but obviously it's different times, isn't it? With yeah. what's going on, it's difficult to get a job now, anyway. Yeah. So, so when you um, started the the course, how can you just give a little breakdown of how it works in terms of what the of course, yeah, are? yeah, so, sure. I'm gonna like try to bring myself back to that time <laughs> back in the days. So back, yeah. <laughs> Throw it way back. Um, I think you start off with your kind of like introduction week, what it is, and you go in and roll. And while you're doing this, you then um, go into some sort of big lecture room and there's a series of tutors. So I'm, I'm not, I can't tell you from the top of my head how many st uh, kind of design studios are there, but let's just say for the sake of this, like about six to 10 okay. and each group of tutors will go in and pitch their studio. And, and then by the end of that, 
they give out a form and you kind of have to put your top five options yeah. and uh in, in, a, in whatever kind of um order that you want you want it to be and uh i think by the end of the day you then get sent back and they kind of like go to you uh, go to you and they, and they tell you which one you ended up with so not all of the time you get your first options but you're more likely to probably get your second or third but if you do get your first then that's good on you did you get your first no I, I actually got my second option but i'm quite thankful for that um, I, I grew very fond of my studio to the to the kind of to the stage where I continued for the two years there. Yeah. So, cause like you can, you can pick one studio one year and in the second year you have to have a change. But I feel like if you've established a relationship with your tutors and you kind of understand the, the work, the style and, and kind of the work that goes behind the studio, it's, it's to your advantage to almost stay there the second year because it's just easier on you as well. Did you have to get interviewed to go into the unit or it was no, just... No, so it, it was, it was lucky draw basically. I think they, um, over the past years, I think it's, it's literally been like mounting random papers, but I think they're using <laughs> some sort of system because sometimes uh, people do complain about, yeah. like, or, or, or try to, you know, throw a faff at their rights. I mean, at the end of the day, you're paying um, a hefty amount for this. So it's, it's only fair on you to kind of like throw a fit if you want. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So um, when it comes to the other units, so you had obviously your main design unit. Yeah, so, so the course was split into uh, two modules. So one of them being architectural productions, which is basically your studio. Yeah. And then the other one was uh, architectural reflections. And within architectural reflections, you get like um, a breakdown of several different units being um, like digital design, critical practice, um, history and technology. And then that same applies to the second year, but it's less heavy. So because it's more based on dissertation. Yeah. So um, that same again voted so in architecture reflections um one of the the modules was digital design for example and this also complied of several different studios or, or units that you also had to vote for so you again might not get your first option for that or, or second option um and it works out that the majority of the time the popular ones are the ones that like have like people don't ever end up with because everyone's just wanting it so um so yeah i think your architecture production with your studio, it's split into 60% um, of the overall course and then the rest is the 40%. But nevertheless, you kind of have to pass it all to get to the next year anyways. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, so um, in my case, I had Design Studio 16, um, which was very much involved in kind of model making and craftsmanship and traditional kind of methods and techniques and how to kind of uh, find new interventions so it starts off with like a smaller project, which then leads and develops into a bigger project later in the new year. Yeah. So yeah, it's probably like two projects for your main studio work. Right, okay. And would you say it was more technical based or more kind of creative? No, so, so yeah, he, he, here's the thing, like uh, coming from Portsmouth, um, our briefs over there um, was very realistic in the sense that like, like, you know, if we're sitting down with our tutors and we get given a brief, there's a breakdown of what's expected. So I almost thought that going into a master's, it's gonna be even more strict and more kind of like um, like concrete. Yeah. Where it was totally the opposite. I almost, if anything, had more freedom in my master's than my undergrad. Um, to this point, I don't know if that was a good thing or a bad thing. I mean, it's a, yeah. good, it's a good thing that like, obviously I'm, I've been in practice for three, four years and then you kind of go back and have some sort of freedom and, and able to play around. Um, and do kind of design things that probably would never be built, but you know, you just, you just have that creativity behind you. Um, so I would say it's more conceptual than technical, a, a lot more conceptual than technical probably. <laughs> yeah, fair play. I think that... uh, throughout the year, first year, in terms of um, technical drawings, you're only really asked to do one technical board, which is pretty simple. And then in the right. second year, it, it's a more about a bit of more of a technical report, but it's linked with your main project, which is good because you also have a better understanding of how your project was actually to be um, designed. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Right, guys, if you want to ask any questions to Manuel, please drop them into the chat. So continuing on, what was the hardest part of the course for you? Oh, God. <laughs> um, so within one of these units, uh, the architecture reflections, there was a digital design, um, 
kind of seminar slash workshop. And that was learning how to understand a grasshopper and, um, yeah. and, and manipulate some giant robotic arm which for those who are kind of interested in that, I could see it's, yeah. it's like, it's an amazing benefit for them and all that. But uh, it was just like learning a new language for me. So it was, it, it was pretty difficult in a sense that like, okay, cool. I'm getting all this, um, this new software thrown on my face. Um, and I get carried away with the design work because you're kind of like so into it, but then you kind of have to pull through with this work. Um, at the end of the, like, like, it's pretty simple once you kind of like, you know, g give it a time in the day. Yeah. And, and you learn something new. But the reason I say that it was the most difficult for me is because it, it was like beyond complicated, but also <laughs> it doesn't benefit me in my current, like, um... So that, that's what I was going to ask is, is yeah. was it forced upon you to learn Brassoft Pro, was it? So the, the digital design um, units are kind of like, I guess to learn some sort of new technology um, or, or, or for it to kind of benefit you if that's the route you're going to. Yeah. Um, this particularly, this, this was my second option as well. Um, oh. <laughs> you and your second options, you know? <laughs> yeah, so I kind of just, you know, went with it. The, the tutors and stuff like that, it, it, it was all great. Like, like, you eventually learn something new and once you learn it, you actually feel good about yourself. You're like, okay, cool, this is really cool. But it's one of those things, like, I don't know, like, if I compare it to math GCC, I probably don't remember half the stuff I did in math yeah, GCC. Yeah, yeah. Like, like it's, that, it's that kind of um, approach to it. So for me, that was the, comp the most complicated thing. And then probably a little bit of dissertation, just finding the time and, and reading and, and all that stuff for that. Trust me. <laughs> yeah. But, but are you saying, Alan, that, that that part of the course, the um, design reflection grasshopper thing, is it beneficial to you now? Um, like, could you do grasshopper if you really wanted to? No. Nah. No. This is my point. This is this is literally my point no. as, as as to why. And then I'm assuming you got a grade for that as well. Uh, yeah, which I actually got a pretty decent grade for, grade for it. Um, because I I think well specifically that unit that I took, it was the first time they um integrated it in the course. Oh, so okay. it was a new thing for everyone. So I, I think the grade that we probably got was based on the efforts that we did. <laughs> so um, I'll, I'll give them I'll give them props for that. But um, I mean, it, it wasn't beneficial. It doesn't work for me now. But I do have friends who did that course with me who they use Grasshopper every day now. Yeah. Um, and that's what they they work with, and and they create amazing things out of it. I just didn't have have that element to me. Like I I, I, I quite know what it is that I want and how I want to do it. Yeah. Um, so when that comes in, I, I kind of like I don't know probably. I'm a bit stubborn or something in a sense that like, okay, it's not going to benefit me. Do I really want to give it the time of the day? Although I shouldn't really encourage that, but you should kind of like, you know. Nah, it's true. Give that interest. Right. So next question. It's going to be, now the next part's going to be more about the university itself. Yeah. And, and how you integrated with into it. So um, did you feel supported by your, by, by your course, whether it's your tutors or, uh, maybe not acad academically supported, but also, I guess, pastoral and kind of all the other parts. Yeah. I mean, going into a master's, you, you're almost kind of expected to have some sort of um, demand and say over your own work. Yeah. So you maybe sometimes would expect a level of support from your tutors, but just you expect that from them. They also should expect from you to kind of make your own decisions as well. So in terms of them being supported, supportive yes um could i have wanted more at some points yes and for by that i mean probably instead of less verbally speaking and more speaking through drawing work and like architect like architectural life you know like mm -hmm. a, the old school way pen and paper and and that's the way that i was kind of um taught at portsmouth like like most of our tutorials would be fully fully based on you know paper and brief and and, and sketching for my unit, it was a little bit less like that. Towards the end, it started growing more, but um, my specific studio, it could have been my specific studio. I do know that other studios were kind of more engaged and more hands-on when it comes to that. Yeah. But um, I do feel like, just like we have some sort of expectations of the tutors um, to kind of give us a support to a certain extent, they could also, you know, um, expect us to, to, to produce some work. I think one thing that I realized, like after becoming, after finishing my master's and stuff like that, is a lot of the times once we once we have a tutorial, we tend to go back to our friends and stuff like that. Mm. 
and the, the, the dilemma is always around, oh my God, he does, the tutor doesn't like this, or the tutor doesn't like that, like this and that. I think at the end of the day, it's really on you to try to sell them the idea. So yeah. they're, they're, they're there to kind of help you kind of come at different perspectives and throw different ideas at you. But um, sometimes you, you have to understand what your own design is before you kind of like, like just try to get their approval, if that makes sense. Yeah. I, I guess that's that's the uh, the thing of masters is that they do expect you to take more control of your work, yeah. and it's more so you going to them as if they're almost like your client, yeah, and yeah, kind of persuading them with your academic knowledge. Um, someone asked, "What unit were you in?" I was in DS sixteen, which is Design Studio sixteen. And then, what was the kind of brief overview of what that unit embodied? So. Our brief, um, it, was, it was very like a uh, heavy model making base. Uh, it was less like, you know, digital work. Like, like you, you're basically spending most of your time in a workshop or creating these mo models that, that, that speak a language. And, and that for me was quite interesting because um, coming from, like going to a uh, conceptual university and producing all this amazing work, it, it's quite nice to three dimensionally and physically yeah. understand what it is that you're trying to do. And our first project, for example, was um, an artifact. So you imagine, um, so my first year, <laughs> I designed a pizza oven. Um, <laughs> <As> you <did. laughs> you're, you're kind of thinking, oh, a pizza oven, paying nine grand tuition fees. Like a pizza oven. <laughs> a pizza oven. But it was the, the concept behind the making of the pizza oven. So the pizza oven was actually a parametric pizza oven. Um, where we went to a ceramic studio and created 9,000, like, like thousands of handmade um, ceramic tiles yeah. that formed a Catalan vault. And this was to understand how the idea of a vault actually works in terms of a, at a much smaller scale. Yeah. So, so it, it's looking at the bigger picture. So you, you're yeah. kind of like at a certain scale experimenting with, with um, the, the idea of model making. Um, but it goes beyond that, if it makes sense. So then that's then integrated into the, into the next phase of the project, which is your main project. And then we would have like study trips. So first year we um, did a bit of um, South of Spain to kind of get inspiration from more, um, kind of Moroccan themed uh, vibes. And second year we went to Tuscany. So we did the whole region um, and went to like marble quarries and stuff like that. And that was quite, quite interesting to kind of like understand how marbles extracted from yeah. sites and, and how they're imported and stuff like that. And then understanding that you then find a way to integrate that into your projects. Mm. So, so yeah, like I said, it's, 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 it's very involved in materials, um, the making craftsmanships, like traditional techniques and, and how you can kind of like, uh, develop those techniques into new interventions and stuff. Yeah. Well, that's it, man. Um, what was the studio? environment like because i think that's a that's a big thing that a lot of people ask is you know there's a yeah. you know, studio's been quite toxic potentially or quite yeah. competitive i mean our studio was everyone we all got along with we were like a, a, a like quite a small group i think we were about 20 of 20 um of um kind of students from all over the place and uh our unit or uh our unit yes oh look. so how many students were there in general of oh. I think uh, Westminster actually has probably one of the largest um, uh, in terms of quantities and um, courses when it comes to the okay. studios and stuff like that. I'm not sure. I, I, I mean, I don't want to throw you a figure in yeah, case yeah. I'm wrong, but I don't, I'm not sure if it's probably around 300 plus or... In masters? Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm. So, so there's a lot of students. Yeah, yeah. So you, you get like, again, several different studios as well. And, and I guess each one of them have their sort of like reputation in terms of how their style is and or how their kind of like workflow, workflow, workflow is. Um, my studio back then, I guess, was more, you know, go into your work and kind of sometimes probably go back home and continue doing work home. If we didn't do much all nighters within probably studio, which maybe yeah. would have been nice. Like like sometimes it's just nice to kind of be surrounded by a bunch of people while working late and stuff like that. There was a, a few of us that did it, but not everyone. Whereas you have other studios like DS10, which is um I don't know if you heard of this unit, it's the Burning Man unit. Um oh. so they create they're very kind of wood based and they basically live there every day, all day, even on weekends. Is um, it um, is the studios 
open 24 hours or how does that work? Uh, no, so I think during the almost like deadline period, it does shut at 11, but then the library is open 24 hours if you wanted to go to the library and, and, stu and, and study there. Yeah. Fair play. So would you say that in the... So, in, in, within the studios, did you, did you kind of have your own allocated studio space or was it kind of free? No, so it, it was pretty open plan. Um, so I think the whole floor is, is, is quite basically open plan and what divides us is, 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 is some kind of like um, engaging screens that have the cover space and also paint up space. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, our studio was next to the door. So sometimes we'd come in and probably not find a desk or something. But um, but eventually it was like a, a, a little like just pick up whatever you could find um, and models kind of all over the place and stuff. Um, quite, maybe not as big as you probably imagine, but enough space. That makes sense. Where, where is it? Where the is campus. It? Yeah, the campus. So it's literally uh, right in front of um, Baker Street. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Is it, is it a big campus or is it, is it architecture separate from the rest of the campus or how is it? Uh, no, so it's the architectural faculty and it, it, it has um, interior design, undergrad, um, master's, PhD, um, and there's also a different master's course as well, which is just the one year um, yeah. um, master's, is not REBA. And, um, and yeah, and I mean, you have your workshops there as well, which I guess is another thing we can speak about in terms of workshops. They have, <clears throat> it's massive and it's incredible. Like you have all the newest equipment, um, all the facilities to it. I think you have to get inducted into each machine that you kind of want to use. Probably the, the, the primary ones like CNC, laser cutting. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, like steel work and stuff. But um, it's there, and I guess that's where you spend a lot of your time as well. So, would you? What advice do you have for people who are looking to apply their masters? Hmm. I mean, in terms of. We just got, uh, Reba just unleashed the, the wards and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and the, actually, I just want to congratulate my friend who, <laughs> Rob Beanie, who, who was awarded the silver medal. Um, he was from that studio as well. Studio Big, up, Rob. Big up, Um I guess my advice is I expect, I guess, a conceptual approach and, and expect the kind of like freedom to, to play around with all these um, different design ideas and, and also expect, I guess, facilities like the workshop and, and support and stuff. Um, but in terms of like, I wouldn't say I have any like negative advice to give in terms of, um, in terms of <laughs> not going there. Not it's negative kind of, advice, but just kind of anything to have to be cautious of and kind of ha have a certain mindset when you go to that place. Cause I know for me, yeah. here to UCL, I'm, my, I'm drowning me. <laughs> and yeah, I don't know, I, I feel as if though, you know, if, there is anything that, that maybe a certain kind of mindset or something that people should have when they come to Westminster? Um, you probably, you probably, from tutors, you probably are expected, you know, to produce some really good work. And, 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 and I guess that sometimes rely on the student as well, wouldn't it? Like, like take initiative, yeah. you kind of like want to do your best and, and, and want to, to do this. Like I kind of went into it with the mentality of like already having a defined style that I kind of know. And, and I just needed to get the, the part two degree and stuff like that <laughs> yeah. but um it's in terms of like location and it, it works out like you tend maybe on after studio days on thursdays you do go out for your your drinks with your colleagues in the pubs and it, you do kind of like bond there and mm -hmm. create like a little family and um and yeah i mean i don't i, would, I don't want to say that you're not going to do all nighters and you're not going to like do all this stuff or yeah the, the dreadful stuff that we usually go go through because i think you probably go through that everywhere um but it, it it it's really on you to kind of be organized and and understand when to stop so th another thing i was going to mention is that as creators um we're kind of like full of imagination and ideas and sometimes it's kind of good to explore explore it all but like know when to stop because if we're, the reality of it is that there is a deadline, there is time that you have to kind of produce all this within. And that's why I feel like the majority of the time, all-nighters and all that stuff happens is because you kind of get carried away with it. But um, I, I, even though it's good, you're kind of like wanting to produce the best, but stick to like one idea and make that idea the best that you can. Yeah. But um, 
but yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. You get free Adobe software to students at, at the Westminster? Um, if I'm honest with you, all my stuff was... Um... <laughs> Did you buy <laughs> all your <laughs> stuff? <laughs> yeah, but you, you do have access to all the computers. And, uh, not all of the students have computers, but they tend to run along one side of the floor yeah. that you can, anyone can access to, and they are kind of installed with all the softwares and facilities that you need. Um, so that's all kind of pre-installed. I think even in the libraries, you, you get to include them. But do you get free Adobe software on your own computer, personal one? I would, I... I the, the man you are saying, yes, I need to know this because <laughs> I'm paying 25 quid a month for my Adobe shit. Oh, no, I don't, I, I don't. I personally didn't like. I had. I already had my stuff installed, and yeah, I, yeah. I, I kind of got through using my own um, equipment. But um, by the looks of it, I have a couple friends who are currently at Westminster that by the, seem to say that yeah, you do. So, what the hell? You right? I don't, I don't know what's going on, or you still just don't offer this. So I need to. I need to like find this out. Oh, and you also. Um, I guess maybe at UCL you can do this as well, but uh, rent out your own kind of Mac uh, as long as you're within the campus, I think. So you put in, you scan in your card and you get given like some sort of laptop that you can kind of take anywhere in the campus. Um, you just have to like scan it back. Honestly, I can't tell you. I've only been to campus once. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm probably, I'm sure you can. I'm sure you can do 101 different things if it weren't for this bastard COVID. <laughs> right, so yes, I'm currently there. And yes, we have it as long as you're in love. That is Sorry. sick. That that you can get the full Adobe software. What about Rhino? Can you get Rhino for free? Um, like I said, I didn't. <laughs> I'm not, I I'm actually not asking you no more. I'm asking your mates. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, all right. Because I actually remember going through friends and, and like trying to get cracks and stuff like that. So yeah. maybe this is a new thing. I, I'm not sure. Maybe it has something to do with the whole COVID situation or possibly, you know, because I'm sick and tired of doing those three months trial things on yeah <laughs> on Rhino. And then the little um pop up oh, your software's not genuine and <laughs> yeah. it seems like it seems like things have changed. It seems like it. Yeah, I mean well yeah, uh, Anastasia's saying Rhino yeah, 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 that's fine. We can do that, but do we wanna be doing that for the rest of our lives? Using <laughs> using different email addresses every three months just to update update your Rhino. When we pay nine k a month for what? Yeah, no, I, I feel I, I feel you. Sorry, I'm. I'm, I'm the Rhino. I actually I actually didn't use it that much uh, while I was at uni. I, I actually got through my masters using ArchiCAD. Um, Is it? Yeah. So I don't I don't, I don't know that software that well. So so ArchiCAD is quite similar to Revit, um, and it's very um, kind of BIM. <laughs> yeah, if yeah. that makes sense. But the reason I did that is because whatever you create is most of the time kind of created in 3D um, and generated. So like whenever you have one update somewhere, it kind of generates that update everywhere live. Okay. So it was, it was a, it was a easy lifesaver for me. And that's what I use in practice as well. So again, it goes back to the, the workflow kind of being pretty um, continuous. Is it free? No. <laughs> uh, yes, I do use ArchiCAD at work as well. Uh -huh. And I think by uh, one thing that I've learned, it was kind of to my advantage is uh, because I was using ArchiCAD at uni and also at work, I had to find out of ways of kind of do different things with ArchiCAD to kind of create these kind of more interesting um, designs than what you typically do at work. And that's now served me as an advantage to where I work now. Yeah. Anastasia is asking. Manuel, what do you think about this petition about getting half of our fee money back, especially as it got you in the end of your year? Oh, well, yeah, that's a good point. Mm. I mean, it'd be handy for Christmas right now. It so... would indeed. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I personally feel like it's not fair on you guys, actually, who are going through the whole year right now paying full tuition um, and not having that full experience. And... Um, it's it was kind of taken away from me, I guess, towards the, the the last few months, but we were already at that kind of verge where we were constantly going to have to be glued to our computer producing all the work. Um, the only stuff that we didn't do as much was the model making stuff, which was very important for our studio. Yeah. Um. So we kind of had to like um improvise and find different different ways of doing that. But I mean, like, if there is any petition on, on this, I'd be more than happy to get involved. Yeah, someone tapped up I need position as well because I'm, I'm I'm gonna be yeah. that, different signatures. The more the merrier. 
Yeah, someone's asking where you work now. So uh, I'm working at uh, Granite Architect, which is a London-based practice in Clapham Common. Ooh. I've been there for nearly four years now. So I've done oh, work there while doing my master's. And I think, um, yeah, I kind of like had to stick to my days and stuff like that to not be a flake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually went back at the time when I was a, a student, there was two other students from Westminster who were working on my practice as well. So they kind of had to devote themselves to full-time student. And because they did that, it was kind of like tougher on me to, to, to <laughs> stand right. by my word and be like, you know what, I'm, guys, because I'm, it, it is quite complicated for work sometimes as well when you decide to go part-time mm -hmm. because uh, the way that they program you your time is based around... Um, like what you charge clients and, and what work needs to be done so you're kind of like um relied on to a certain extent so if you all of a sudden turn around and say like oh you can't rely on me this week it's kind of like part of them because for whatever yeah, reason how risky that isn't it yeah but but i wouldn't change it because i felt that going back to work during uni uh, or like in between kind of created a break in between like like say say, say you're constantly yeah. working on your design in your design studio and you want to like just ease off your break a bit or something like that and you go into something else and you kind of like have a break from that and you go back into it with a fresher mind it worked it, it was it worked for me yeah no 100 percent. i agree I, I i did that in undergrad i worked yeah. at an um, interior design firm yeah throughout all of undergrad i do the cad work for them and yeah. definitely it was it was because it was on a um on a, it, was on, it wasn't on a freelance basis. I was a designer, but I was um, doing it as when they needed the work doing. It was just yeah. a lot easier to discipline your time that way yeah. and spend a couple hours doing that and then knowing what you're going to be doing. Yeah. And then having a diary was really handy as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And another thing is that you're kind of surrounded by architecture at school and at work. So yeah. going back to work, if you ever needed some sort of like, like help or, or some sort of support as well. It, it's always good to um, hear from like the other the other side of the road. It's legit, like literally, I remember I used to go like 12 o'clock at night to have the key for the office and yeah. go and do all my printing in, the, in on their plotter at work rather than oh, yeah, using yeah. the printers at work at uni. Is it common for part two students to work part-time during masters or is it personal? Mm, good question. The majority of the people that I was with most of them were working as well. Um, but it depends, I guess, what studio you're in, how much workload is expected from you, and I guess how organized you are. I think um, there's any jobs going. <laughs> <laughs> it's all well and good saying that, but there's no work going. Because I, I really, I, I wanted to work as well. Yeah. Just, yeah. And it's... Because for me, that, that discipline is so important. Otherwise, yeah. you're just doing... I've never once in my whole architecture life um, have not worked while studying. And this, because this is now the first time, I'm really struggling to just stay focused. Yeah. And yeah, so I, I personally, I would, I would recommend it. I mean, it is a personal choice. Obviously, you get money, you get paid for it. And, but it's, it's difficult to, I guess, find a place that's suited to the course. So I guess the course is probably what the, the, the main priority. Yeah. 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 What What are you doing after work? Any competitions? Competitions. I'm a bit confused by that. Um, like, if I take part in any competitions aside from work, or I'm assuming that's what they're asking. But if you want to clarify, go ahead. <laughs> I, I think um, obviously while working at work and the practice and stuff like that. I do find the, the time of the day after work to kind of work on my own stuff, like my own development and my, and my own kind of like goals and ambition where I want to go to in life. Yeah. It's not something that grows overnight, but it, eventually I guess every director who owns their own practice now uh, has to start somewhere by doing that. So that's, again, reflects on how organized you are with your time and, and what you do yeah. do with it. So where do you see your career heading? Do you want to be a qualified architect or? Yeah. So, my next steps would be to go back to Westminster and do my part three next September. But that's reflective on COVID because to do your part three, you obviously have to undertake a case study and take a project through um, kind of like on site. 
and because we have all these regulations coming in and out, and we yeah. don't know how how limited we're going to be to that. It's going to be kind of subject to that. But but the, the the kind of goal would be go back to Westminster, do my part three, continue where I am now, uh, take a case study from from my practice, um, use that for my part three, and then probably work there a few more years until I can kind of like you know depend on my own work to get somewhere. Yeah. Oh, yeah, um, still, still a few more years to come, but it's all a stepping stone, isn't it? Mm. Morwajah is asking, do you get paid when you put into placements or looking for job? Can, can you please clarify what you mean? <laughs> do you get paid? Are you asking, do you get paid on a, for a placement? More like universal credit, where they like pay you fifty quid a week <laughs> <laughs> to say you're looking for work. I'm confused. I, mean, obviously... I, that, um, I think one thing that you picked up on the last week's interview, um, with someone threw something in there about an internship or apprenticeship. apprenticeship. Yeah. And some of my colleagues right now, actually two of them, have gone to South Bank Uni, I believe, and they're doing they're undertaking some sort of apprenticeship where. The course, the master's course of part two is three years long because you, you're working as well. Working is part of the course. Yeah. Um, obviously, you have that extra year of work on top, but I guess it's balanced between um, getting your experience at work as well. Oh, so, sick. yeah. And is it Rebro accredited? Um, sorry? Is it Rebro accredited? Yeah, it, it is. So, a couple other universities do that as well, but from the top of my head, I'm not sure which other ones. Ooh. Interesting. I'm going to look into that, you know, because I, I never really considered, I mean, I don't see why you can't do arc, an architectural degree through an apprenticeship. Like, yeah. I feel like it makes a bit more sense. Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 a, bit, it's a bit longer, but it's, it's more intense, I guess, as well. But you get, it, you get it out the way quicker, I suppose. You, you become qualified sooner. And, and you get paid to work. <laughs> yeah. I think, um, I'm trying to remember what sort of university that does it. Um, I can't remember from the top of my head, but an old colleague of mine did it, and he qualified as the youngest architect in 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 the country for a while, at twenty seven, I think twenty twenty six or twenty seven. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, it's quite it's quite good. My architecture is long. <laughs> we do it. Oh, so quite long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Someone's asking, who's your favorite architect? Ooh, ooh. So I'm quite into uh, minimalist architecture. So. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard of Fran Sylvester, which is a Spanish architect, and perhaps David Chipperfield, Taddy Orlando. Um, I do like Heatherwick in terms of uh, creativity and how it's all about design for him on so many different aspects. So from the bus to a chair to a building that moves to all these uh, amazing things. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Heatherwick is kind of lit, so... Right. Uh, so we've pretty much gone through all the questions now, I think. Oh, I mean, I feel like you kind of answered it already. Are you cheap as good? Hold on, man. I'm just getting these questions here. Are oh. you ever going to create that pizza thing, though? I actually did <laughs> <laughs> I actually did create it, though. I do have it on my website if you guys want to want to see it. The yeah, plug thing. yourself. What's your, what's your app? So the, the website's on my profile actually if you just search manualurbina.studio and then if you go into projects you should you would be able to see the final piece there and it's installed in a ceramic studio in rochester square which is in camden and we're quite proud of that <laughs> <laughs> yeah check it out guys yeah yeah i'm quite i'm wondering um how many of you guys are actually from westminster there seems to be a fair few who are answering not the questions that you can answer. <laughs> yeah, well, I know one of the guys who's, who's commenting is, is actually a friend of mine, um, so I know he's at Westminster. <laughs> and what, how, what is that, Bongani Much? I don't know if I said that right. He's having a way of a time. <laughs> <laughs> also, was, would you say Westminster was good for networking and kind of making links with other Yeah, so there's actually... In the industry? Architectural societies, um, um, they're quite, a lot of the tutors actually as well are, come from big time firms as well. Yeah. So most of the time, the students that go there either end up working for them or 
a lot of the times at the end of the year show um, exhibition, you, you're probably kind of like scouted by people that go there. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, that was another thing that I realized with, with Westminster in terms of its graduates seem to have some sort of good reputation to kind of get a job straight after. Um, and yeah, you kind of like tend to leave your card around. My practice personally, where I am, there's two directors, one of them being from Portsmouth and another one being from Westminster. So oh. I'm not saying they have preference, but most of the time, <laughs> most of the time, the people we work we work with come from these universities. Okay, cool. So I, I guess that's that's quite an important thing to. Well, for me, that was a big thing when I was considering part two was yeah, being able to network and create good links with people for that graduate outcome. Yeah. Yeah, so it's good that Westminster also has good links as well. Yeah, yeah, and they, and they provide a lot of guest lecturers. So aside from students, you also get outsiders coming in to see these lectures from guest architects and, and crits and, and so on. Yeah. And, and a lot of the time when we have crits in studios as well, there used to be, they would kind of like jump in between studios and, and we would have crit, uh, guest crits from another studio. And it, it was just quite nice to for everyone to kind of have a feel of what's going on around, yeah. even though you're not fully engaged into it on your on kind of your everyday basis. Well, speaking of crits, Bangani Much, I don't know if you're saying your name right, um, he, he, he teaches first year at Westminster and he's saying he should come and crit his students. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be very fun. We, <laughs> we, we, we actually had that a couple of times um, last year where some of one of our directors, which is a Stuart Piercy from Piercy and Co. Okay. Um, would, bring, would bring some of his um, employees who used to actually be in, in DS16. Um, so like, you know, yeah. last and, past, and, uh, and, and and bring them in. So that, that happens a lot. And I actually feel that that's quite a good way to go about it. Just like what you guys are doing right now as well. Like just kind of interviewing all these people and, and having an understanding from a different perspective on how things actually work and have some sort of opinion. Yeah, 100%. Mm. Uh, and I guess that's kind of why we set this up was, was to, obviously, in, the, in these times, it's more difficult anyway to interact with people, but within yeah. an architectural community of, of trying to understand different perspectives. I think we're going to wrap up shortly, and there's a really nice question to end up with. Um, what's your top tip for younger students? Right. So, top tip. Okay, so... Go in with the mentality of having fun. Obviously, this might be like the last time in terms of education that you, you have some sort of freedom. Um, cr just create, 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 fully engage with models, get physical with it, um, experiment. And uh, aside from all of this, like have your fun with it, but also know when it comes to a point to like, you know, set concrete and then produce the credible stuff that you're going to produce from, from this kind of like idea. And, and be organized. And again, back to the, the comment with the tutor and stuff like that, like, like understand that they're there to help you, not so much to just crit you or, or kind of be hard on you. Mm -hmm. So, so try to, you need to believe in yourself to, for them to kind of believe in you. So, so, um, so yeah, I mean, just have fun, really. Wise words, eh? <laughs> <laughs> right, so any final comments or things you want to highlight before we say au revoir? I just want to give you guys credit as well for doing all this stuff. I think the one thing that sets you aside from like, I guess these pages that are, are trying to promote architecture is that you guys are actually taking the time in the day to engage to with like, like even stuff like this, like, okay. yeah, yeah, big up. I mean, it's, it's all down to Sandra really. I, I, I'm just the one that does this and then the jets off for the week. But yeah, no, um, obviously to scales is, is one of those pages that does interact and does do things with, um, yeah with their followers so yeah man yeah, yeah pick yourself up yeah. with that cheesy grin there <laughs> i can see it growing pretty rapid as well so i'm quite like um qu quite proud for the, the opportunity and quite, and quite like thankful for it so eventually once you guys make it to the top like you know any time management advice from you students i don't know if that's a question from you to the other students in there no, it says any, any time management advice from you to, oh, for you, for students. So just, just management oh. advice. Uh, okay, so like, it, like if you guys have worked in practice, just go in with that mentality. Like, like wake up early. Like I realistically woke up probably like at nine or something like that. I'm not going to be hard. But um, 
kind of give yourself a period. A lot of the times the distractions happen. Like you would be in studio sometimes and you'd get distracted by friends and stuff and you look at your time and you, you realize that a whole day has gone by and you probably haven't done as much as you wanted to do. That's fine to do sometimes, but also kind of like, you know, kind of be strict on yourself to be organized and to almost like produce some sort of um, tick box exercise every day to buy it. By the end of the day, you wanted to produce this and think about how in the future, something that I did, maybe a quick tip of advice, is I prepared my portfolio sheets in advance and I read my layouts and, and stuff was gonna be. So it was a matter of almost like to just inset into a template. So, so if that was helpful. And a lot of our stuff were in crits with um, physical and print base. So whenever I printed out stuff, I, I'd almost print it with the intention for it to go in a, in a final portfolio rather than just get some sort of approval from the tutors. Um, so they can kind of see a style because sometimes uh, the drawing comes across a, a bit more clearer <coughs> once you have like some sort of like um like like style set to it yeah yeah i, I agree 100 percent um i think it's it's all about discipline and kind of and and yeah kind of knowing yourself more yeah 100 percent. right we're gonna it's gonna end up shutting off any minute now so I want to say thank you to you, Manuel, for taking your time out and doing this for us. Thank you. Um, no I hope it's been really insightful for all the viewers to get an idea of what it's like to be at Westminster for anyone who is, you know, looking to apply or, you know, thinking of changing their university. So I just want to get a better idea. And I think also just having a general chat about how we work is really, really important as well because it's very yeah. easy to get caught up in autopilot mode where you just kind of do things without thinking because, you know, you're, you're in the midst of it and trying to get it done. So, yeah, man, really, really appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you for my first Instagram Live as well. What an experience to remember. <laughs> Isn't it? it was gonna, it's going to be recorded and saved so you can yeah, share it and whatnot. Great. All right, then. Well, you have a good rest of your evening then. And, and yeah, good luck on, uh, on finishing your studies as well. And hopefully... You can stay in touch. Yes, thank you. I need all the luck I can get. <laughs> no, sure you can. All right. Thank you very much, mate. All right, take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Right, guys, so that was the first, technically the first episode, well, it's the second episode, but yeah, I'm gassed that we finally had a guest that actually came on. And let me know if you thought it was a good chat or not, because I really enjoyed that. It's really good to get um, an insight into how all the universities work and whatnot. And we're going to be back next week, same time, with someone else <laughs> who's my next guest <laughs> do you know what i'm so bad at remembering things like this sammy you're gonna have to help me out bear with us <laughs> the next guest is <laughs> um... oh right bear with me <laughs> i feel like we really need to to up this part um I think the next guest is from CSN, maybe. Uh, Mara. The next guest is Mara from Greenwich. <laughs> She's going to be... I'm assuming it's a she. Is it a she? Yeah, it's Mara from Greenwich. There she is. She's going to be on next week with us to talk about life in Greenwich. And, yeah, same conversation. Trying to get some more ideas out there about how to work within these times. So yes, guys, thank you very much for being part of this. And catch me next week, same time. My at is at FazMCR, my little plug. <laughs> and um, yeah, check it out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my hat in because I want you all to follow me. Because I've got some good shit coming on too, I swear down. <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you very much. Big love. And I will see you all next week with Mara from...